Civil War had ended and the Confederacy was no more. The army, defeated, disillusioned, moved in ragged gray lines toward home. When the returning soldiers crossed the Red River into Texas, they found the southern way of life they had vowed to defend in ruin. The economy was in disarray, the people demoralized. Thousands of Union soldiers marched through the streets. For five years, Union officers ruled Texas and its courts. Among the returning Confederate soldiers was Colonel William Lewis Moody. A Virginian who came to Fairfield, Texas in 1852, he was an attorney who had become a successful merchant. By 1860, at age 32, he was one of the wealthiest men in the state. When the war came, he enlisted, fought gallantly, was captured and released in an exchange of prisoners. He was seriously wounded in the fighting after the fall of Vicksburg. He returned home embittered, angry, disgusted at the brutality and futility of war, determined to make something of value from the economic and emotional rubble. Colonel Moody distrusted the political order. He knew money offered a better route to power than politics. He was drawn to the promise of Galveston and he established a new cotton brokerage on the island. Colonel Moody became one of the best cotton traders in the business. Tough, shrewd, intensely competitive, it wasn't long before he was financing the planters. He invested in railroads and championed the improvement of Galveston's harbor so more and more cotton could be shipped to the east. To influence the market, in 1873, he helped create the first cotton exchange in Texas. He was elected to the state legislature, but served only six weeks before resigning to become the state financial agent. As such, he helped shape the economic destiny of Texas. In 1876, Texas Governor Richard Koch commended Colonel Moody for saving the credit of the state. While Colonel Moody was building his fortune, Galveston was becoming the most cosmopolitan of Texas cities. There was a spirit of endless horizon, of boundless possibility. In the Queen City of the Southwest, Galveston Strand was a bustling commercial avenue where a bright man was limited only by the range of his ambition. In the port, once the stronghold of the pirate Jean Lafitte, there was a forest of masts, cotton bales on the wharves, hundreds of ships from all corners of the globe, bringing goods and thousands of immigrants. Here was theater, concerts on the beach, dances in open-air pavilions, yachts sailing across the bay. It was a season for a city where life was good and the future offered visions of prosperity. W. L. Moody, Jr. was Colonel Moody's son. A native Texan born in 1865, he had been sent to Virginia for an education. At age 21, he joined his father and their enterprise continued to flourish. Like his father, W. L. Moody, Jr. had the Midas touch, a gift for finance. My business and my ambition were once my guiding stars, he wrote. I dreamed of being rich and having a great business house known far and wide. But now things have changed. My soul and mind are yours. Ambitions, business and all shall be subserved to the wishes of my sweet sweetheart. He had fallen in love. Her name was Libby Rice Shern, the daughter of a prominent Houston mercantile family. In 1890, they married. They raised four children while the business continued to grow. Banking, land, ranching, insurance, publishing, and hotels followed. She feared for him. He answered, Do not worry about me, for my capacity for work seems endless, and I really enjoy it. It is just like playing cards and succeeding 
is winning. A 31-room mansion, it was one of the grandest on the most fashionable avenue in Galveston. The house had been built between 1893 and 1895 for the widow Narcissa Willis. The architect was an Englishman named William Tyndall. Pottier and Stymus Company, the famous New York design firm, created the interiors. Following the death of Narcissa Willis in 1899, her daughter put the house on the market. W. L. Moody Jr., among others, made an offer. Winds of 120 miles per hour. A wall of water 16 feet high. One half the city demolished. 6,000 people dead. The house stood. The ruinous hurricane of September 8, 1900 forced many people to abandon Galveston. But W. L. Moody Jr.'s bid was not withdrawn. By September 25th, the house was his for the original offer of $20,000. The Moody's stayed. In 1900, Will Moody brought his wife Libby and their children, Mary, William, Shern, and Libby, to this house. In this house, the Moody family would live for over 80 years. Here the children were raised, and all the encounters of family life, great and small, triumphant and despairing, took place. Through the years, the mansion was the scene of dances and celebrations. Libby and Will Moody would live here the rest of their lives. Their daughter Mary would live in this house for over 40 years, guiding the family's business and philanthropic interests, sitting on the boards of some 50 corporations. But that is all to come. Today is her debut. It is December 12, 1911. An orchestra plays in the conservatory. The house fills with flowers. A special moment suspended in time so that you might experience the day Mary Elizabeth Moody was introduced to Galveston society. Mr. and Mrs. William Lewis Moody, Jr. Miss Moody at home. Tuesday evening, December 12th, 1911, at 8 o'clock, 2618 Broadway, dancing. <laughs>